Hello and welcome to Talking Golf with Gary. This week, the dynamic Gary will introduce you to all kinds of topics pertinent to this past week of golf. He'll give you some tidbits of information as what's coming up and take you on a tour around the world for all of the golfing highlights. Sit back and enjoy Talking Golf with Gary. And hello and welcome to another edition of Talking Golf with Gary. It's the first edition of 2019 and Happy New Year to everybody out there. I hope you had a wonderful holiday. I know I did. Uh, took a little vacation time there and uh, we're back now. We're back with great guests and great information for you and we're going to continue to do this throughout the year and maybe add some new features as we go on i hope we get a chance to do that we'll have to see how everything works out with with different things but so happy to be back and and again i hope everybody had a great uh uh holiday season because it was uh, a, a terrific time of the year and of course now we're being inundated with all kinds of news uh you know new models of clubs coming out. Callaway's got the Epic Flash coming out. Uh, TaylorMade's got the, uh, I think it's the M5 and the M6. Um, not sure. Titleist has got some new ones coming out. They're all coming out now. And even some of the lesser known companies have new product coming out. And Wilson kind of jumped ahead. They came out with the Cortex already. Uh, but they have some new irons and stuff coming out. And this is all you're going to hear about now over the next couple of weeks. And, you know, I was thinking about this the other day, and uh, it just dawned on me, do we really need, you know, another $500 driver every year, every golf season? It just seems it's pretty crazy in a way that every year we, we uh, get bombarded with these uh, new things. Can the technology improve that much? over the course of 12 months, and I know they work on these things for years, but uh, it just seems a little strange to me. And uh, look, most people I know <laughs> are still playing clubs that are 10, 15, 20 years old. They're not going out and buying all of this because who can afford it? I mean, you just can't afford to keep up with all of this stuff all of the time. So, uh, But I guess, you know, the companies have to innovate. They have to stay in business. And it, obviously there's a marketplace out there for it that they uh, that they can do this. And, um, you know, I just wish them good luck. And if they want uh, me to test any or want to send a few, uh, you know, I'll be more <laughs> than welcome to do so for them. Uh, you got to always be kind to everybody. All right, so let's take a look at a uh, quick recap of this week's. It was the Century Tournament of Champions in Hawaii. And uh, Xander Shafley shot a course record to uh, win the championship on the final round. And he had to do that because he needed every shot to beat Gary Woodland by one shot and win, win the Century Tournament of Champions. Shafley started the final round five shots out of lead and open with a bogey. It didn't look good at that point, but his fortunes turned around quickly and it got better with every hole. He ran off three straight birdies. He chipped in from the front of the green on a par five ninth for an eagle. He holed the wedge from 107 yards for another eagle on number 12. And I guess you, you can say everything was going his way. Uh, he was tied with Woodland over the closing holes. But he finished, Shoffley did, birdie, birdie, to match four plays for the record. Woodland had a chance to force a playoff, but he hit his drive on a par 5 18th so far, 390 yards downhill, but into a Kona win that he was between clubs. He tried to draw a hard four iron and left it out to the right, hit a pitch and run to 10 feet, but missed the birdie putt. It was a tough loss for Woodland. He started the final round with a three-shot lead, closed with a bogey-free 68. He never shot worse than 68 all week and was the only player in the winner's-only field to have all four rounds in the 60s, and yet it wasn't enough. Uh, still wasn't enough. That's that's a that's a shame and a crime. And he was playing some new irons this week as well as uh, besides the equipment updates, we got the uh, news of the players that were changing, and he was one of the players. He is now playing Wilson staff. Justin Thomas closed with a 65 
to finish alone in third place. So uh, that's the, the first. Look, I know they, they started in November was the beginning of the 2019. This is the first of the two that actually two that calendar year 2019 first tournament century tournament of champions Xander Shoffley wins. And uh, as I said, uh, uh, other news, uh, Justin Rose, after 20 years, has switched from TaylorMade to Honma. I think that's how you say it, Honma uh, Golf. And, uh, you know, I guess that's where the money is. Uh, Honma is a uh, very precise uh, company that made uh, high-end uh, irons and uh I guess they're getting involved now. They didn't get involved so much in the tour. Uh, players had used them for years, but now now they're sponsoring uh, Justin Rose, apparently. We'll see who else they will uh, start to sponsor at this point. And uh, other guys changed. Troy Marriott changed brands. Brant Snedeker is a free agent. We don't know yet what who's, who's or what he's using. Um, some other guys, too. I think, uh, Francesco Molinari who was hot last year. Uh, has switched to Callaway. I believe he is a Callaway uh, tour player now. So all kinds of switching. But you'll see that as as the time goes on and uh, as uh, the tournaments heat up and we see more of these guys playing. All right, got a great guest tonight uh, and uh, want to get to that and we'll do so right after this message. Baseball and BBQ, your place for interesting baseball talk, opinions, and history. Baseball and BBQ, your place for barbecue recipes, tips, and interviews from the world of barbecue. If you like baseball and if you like barbecue, then tune in to Baseball and BBQ. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and BaseballTalkRadio.com. My guest tonight is Cindy Miller. She is a former LPGA Tour player, and currently she plays on the LPGA Legends Tour. She's a Class A LPGA professional. She ha- was voted the 2010 National LPGA Teacher of the Year. She's also been named Player of the Year for the Northeastern United States. Cindy is among the top 50 women teachers in the United States, ranked by Golf Digest. And if that wasn't enough, she's also a motivational speaker and corporate trainer. And she also got time, I don't know how, to uh, co-host a podcast called Women of Golf. Uh, Cindy, welcome to uh, Talking Golf with Gary. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. Well, it's such a long and uh, storied resume. Um, But let's go back to the beginning. How did you get started in uh, the game of golf? Well, my parents played, and they would drag me to the golf club. And I didn't like golf. I thought it was dumb. So I was at the pool all day, and I got a little chubby in eighth grade, and all the cute boys started calling me Ten Ton Tessie. So I immediately found an aversion to swimming, and the only other choice was to go out on the golf course. <laughs> so I started to play, and, I, and I, the head pro said, you know, she really is pretty good. So... I, um, my mom took me to an LPGA tour event with a bunch of her friends in Buffalo and I saw Laura Baugh and Laura at the time I was 17, she was 18 and I immediately got jealous and said, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to do what she's doing. (laughs) So that's how the dream was born. And uh, you mentioned Laura Bohr, and of course you played with many of the uh, greats on the LPGA Tour. Are there any moments or moments that stand out to you uh, about your days on the tour? The the uh, you know the most exciting or uh, most embarrassing moment of your career? I think the moment I remember best was my second year on tour. I had to make a six-foot putt to keep my card in the last tournament of the of the year. And that, I did make the putt. I didn't realize it at the time. I knew it was important, and I knew I needed to, you know, it was, you better make this putt. 
-hmm. but I had no idea that it meant, you know, you're either unemployed or you keep going. And so, uh, I mean, that's a lot of pressure. And how old were you at that time? Probably 23, 24. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, uh, they, they say that, a, a, you know, when when these, uh, when these when the pros win a tournament and, and they're set for the next two years, that it's a big relief. And So you must have felt pretty relieved when she got that tour card back. Yes, yes, I did. I did. Now you've also done a a number of things for the Golf Channel over the years, and including uh, being a contestant on Big Break Three. Can you uh, talk about your your Golf Channel experience and your Big Break experience? Well, the only reason I applied for Big Break is because I wanted to learn how not to choke my guts out. And I wanted the opportunity and to get good enough to win a Legends Tour event. And I received an email from the Golf Channel asking for people to audition to be on Big Break 3, ladies only. And the little voice in my head said, you know, you really should do this. Um, and, and, and the other little voice said, well, that's stupid. You don't want an exemption because if you won big break, you win an exemption on the mm -hmm. LPGA tour. So the other little voice said, well, that's dumb. You know, you don't want an exemption <laughs> on the LPGA tour. You've already played on the LPGA tour and you're 45, <clears throat> excuse me, 45 years old. And, you know, that's not what you're looking for. You right. can't compete with girls that are 20 years old, right? Uh -huh. But then the other little boy said, well, excuse me, but we both know that if you had to hit a shot over water, let's say you're tied for the lead, you had to hit a shot over water with thousands of people watching you on the 18th hole, we both know you'd choke your guts out. Oh, good point. You know, you're right, <laughs> I would. So I applied to be on the show never thinking that I would get called to audition. And I did get called to audition, and I, I had to think about it. It was like a month or two after. I really basically forgotten that I applied. Uh -huh. And I said, well, yeah, let me think about it. I'll call you back and let you know if I'm going to come for the audition. And I did, and I was chosen, and very. I had a great time. I had so much fun. I knew how lucky I was to be one of the contestants. So I didn't take the opportunity lightly. Mm -hmm. I ended up third in the big break. I think I did a pretty good job. And then the next Legends Tour event, the week after the big break ended its series on the air, I got an exemption into an LPGA Legends Tour event. And believe it or not, I did walk to the 18th hole the last day, tied for the lead, and had to hit a shot over water with thousands of people watching me. <laughs> and I didn't choke my guts out. So it's just so funny how things happen sometimes. <laughs> I didn't end up winning. My girlfriend that I was I played with the first round was behind me, and she ended up birdieing the 17th hole, and she won by one. You know, but the moral of the story was I didn't choke my guts right. out. I finished second in a Legends <laughs> Tour event. I made $32,500, more than I ever made in my three years on the LPGA Tour, and I was exempt for the next year. So it was a great experience. <laughs> and, and, and talk a little bit about the uh, LPGA, the Legends Tour. Um, we don't really hear a lot about it. Um, I really learned about it a couple of months ago when, uh, I mean, I had heard that they had events in the past but never really connected with it. And then I was watching, uh, I think it was the Golf Channel, a couple of months ago or a month or so ago and um, saw Laura Davies playing and realized it was a live tournament and it was all the, uh, uh, you know, big names, legends of the, the LPGA Tour. And... Uh, and I said, gee, why don't they promote this more, and why do we not know about this more? Could you explain about the Legends Tour to us? Well, you know, it's funny. Jane Blaylock and I think about 20 or 30 other players invested $5,000 apiece probably 20 years ago to start the Legends Tour. And... 
Jane Blaylock has been running the LPGA Golf Clinic for women. Now she runs the PGA uh, Women's Golf Clinics all over the country. Mm -hmm. And she had a business model already in place. So it was her job to run these events and sell them and get sponsors and such. And I never heard about it until one Monday morning I was sitting in my office reading the, the paper and saw you know, the summary of the tournament that weekend. And I, and I looked and it, it was a $500,000 purse. I said, Oh my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> and, and I looked and Nancy Lopez shot 85 one round and got paid $3,000. <laughs> so needless to say, I immediately thought, well, I'd like to play and I can shoot 85 and I'd like to get paid $3,000 for doing it. Right. Yeah. So, so I called them and I said, you know, what do you have to do to compete? And they basically said, well, you're really not good enough. You didn't make enough money when you played on the tour. You have to qualify. So we had probably four or five events back mm -hmm. then in 2000. And, and I, you, you know, you had to qualify. There were some that were corporate events, some pro-ams, and a few official events. And they had a qualifying school. And, you know, we just, we played. And then... Needless to say, we didn't have the LPGA behind us. It mm -hmm. was just a bunch of former players trying to sell it. And so, fortunately, we now have two major championships. We have the U.S. Women's Senior Open, which was contested in July. And then we have the Senior LPGA Championship, which is what you saw on the mm -hmm. Golf Channel in October, October 15th, 16th, and 17th. Right. And I was fortunate enough to get into the event. And we're trying to grow the tour. We believe we really have something to offer people, you know, for those who are old and remember, you know, Julie Inkster and Nancy Lopez and Patty Sheehan and Dan Stevenson. Um, you know, you can come and watch. And then we do a lot of corporate events and training and clinics and exhibitions and stuff. Well, yeah, I, I you know, uh, the champion store seems to do pretty well on the men's side and uh I I always wondered why don't they do that on the women's tour and as you said uh they just didn't uh, do it until the group got together, but uh I I I think uh, it's a great idea. Is there a plans of expanding it or would you like to expand to different areas or uh, any particular areas of the country that they're looking into trying to get into, or is it just trying to get it anywhere that they can at this point? Anywhere we can at this point, we're looking for national sponsors, people that are interested in having an event. And you can have an event in your city for as little as $150,000, you know, depending on the purse. Um, we're also partnering with the Symmetra Tour, which is the minor league tour of the LPGA, Mm -hmm. and doing events with the younger girls, mentoring-type, you know, situations. But, no, we're looking for sponsors all over the country. And that's always that's always a tough thing. I know um, out here in Long Island we had the Champion Store, as I was talking about, uh, for a number of years, and then the sponsor left, and uh, now there's, there's nothing, and it's, it's kind of... You kind of miss it, you know, when you go into it every year and and seeing the uh, the in this case the men that we grew up with watching, and um, now uh, we're going to have the PGA Championship next year, but it's just not the same when you have a regular stop like that. You're absolutely right. We've had events. We had the Corning Classic forever, mm -hmm. and then we had the LPGA Wegmans Championship in Rochester, and that is now the PGA Women's Championship, which is just, it's very sad. People in Rochester really, you know, it was there for so long. Right. And people really miss it. You know, they look forward to going every year. Yeah, and and uh, it, it does, it kind of leaves a gap you know <laughs> because as you say you used to go in and now all of a sudden it's not there and and i always felt that long island was a would be a good landing spot for either the lpga or right now the lpga lpga legends tour absolutely 
All right, now, uh, as we were talking before, you do a lot of teaching nowadays. You've been very successful at it. Um, what what makes you such a successful teacher? Because I care about helping my students. And and you know what else? I I really do. I'm I'm really competitive. Mm-hmm. And. So when someone comes in and I say, okay, why are you here? What are you looking for? I'm going to give them more than they want or mm-hmm. need. I'm going to give them more than they want. And when I make them happy, I'm happy. And everything's like a competition, which right. is a little sick, and, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, but the point is, is if I get what I want, you're definitely getting what you want. Right. So my mission is to make you better than you think you can be. And I'm very fortunate in the fact that I married a, a PGA Tour player, mm-hmm. Alan Miller, who played in the Masters five times, three times as an amateur and twice as a professional on the PGA Tour. And he's, um, we call him a golf swing technician, and he really understands the golf swing. And, and when I met him, I was at the University of Miami on the golf team, and I was always, I've never... I've always been an underdog, and I've always had to work really hard. And here's this guy that's, you know, the second purest ball striker Dave Powell's ever tested, <laughs> swinging the club, and I'm like, holy cow, I'm not, you know, I'm working way too hard. Right. So I have picked his brain over the last 37 years that I've been married to him, <laughs> and he's, he's made the golf swing so simple, and so I... I'm not trying to be elaborate or confuse you. I really simplify what you need to do. You know, the ball goes up when the club goes down. You got to brush the grass, you know, rather, (laughs) oh, keep your head down, your arms bending, and you got to keep your arms straight. I don't do any of that. And I think I make my students comfortable with me, and then I simplify the swing, and they really get better fast. Mm-hmm. And I love it. I know I've taken a few lessons and I've gotten pretty screwed up at some with some teachers uh, because some teachers try to fit you into what they want to teach. And um, I don't know. I kind of feel that you should be able to just work your own. Uh, you know, we all have a natural. Everybody's different, and uh, there should be a way within your natural capabilities to work a golf swing. Absolutely. And and that, again, as much as you say, I call those people that confuse you, the committee of they, <laughs> you know, and, and they can really tend to mess you up. And then when students have a bad experience, they're really afraid and apprehensive to take more lessons because they're like, that was not fun. I got worse. I'm confused. I don't know what the heck I'm supposed to do. And, and so... To be honest with you, those people help me make a living in Buffalo teaching golf to public people, <laughs> right? But on the other hand, my poor students come in and they're wounded, you know, yes. <laughs> and I have to help them. Yeah, it's very difficult. And, you know, when when uh, if you go on YouTube and, and you're looking and there's so many different philosophies and, and I happen to be uh, – a senior golfer, I, I uh, uh, let myself go a little bit, but I'm, 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 I'm trying to get back into some shape here. But I have bad knees, and, and I can't make all these turns and twists and everything like that. And um, <laughs> there's just so many philosophies, and it's so confusing. The, the impact zone, the rot- rotary swing. Um, do you have a, 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 a philosophy that, that's uh, easy to understand? Yeah, the ball goes where the face points. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I just show people what a square face looks like and say, just, you're going to start it there, square, behind the ball, aiming the face where you want the ball to go. You're going to swing it back and bring it back to where it started. And I do not want you to rotate and twist and turn. You know, I, I believe you could play with your legs crossed. And sometimes it's easier to do that, and and you won't hurt your back. Mm-hmm. So I, it almost could appear that I dumb it down too much, but people understand it. 
I, and you know, it's funny. I've got a guy who owns a bunch of restaurants in Buffalo, and his wife came in for a lesson. And the first lesson, he came in a little bit late, right? So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, well, let's check out Cindy. And so <laughs> he walks in, and she's pounding the back wall 100 yards away because we, we teach in a dome in the winter. She's pounding the ball like bullets. And um, he goes, whoa, what did you do? I go, well, watch her. And, and she's like, oh, my God. He goes, well, now, wait. Do you not want her to early set her wrist? I go, no. Well, doesn't she need to rotate? No. I go, watch her. He's like, oh, my God. So, again, and he's one of those guys who's listened to all this stuff, and he goes, mm-hmm. oh, no, 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 I've taken too many lessons, and I'm so screwed up I can't hit it. I go, well, go hit a shot. He goes, you really want me to do that? I go, absolutely. I want you to beat the crap out of it. Throw the face. <laughs> Let it rip. He goes, nobody says that. I go, I know. He goes, oh, my God. I go, well, there you go. Freedom. Go have fun. Yeah, I, I, I think, this, you know, you get on the tee and, and you're, you're thinking about keep this straight. Keep your left arm straight. Don't don't let your right arm go in a chicken away. And then before you know it, you you, you can't swing. It's it's a, a, a analysis, a paralysis by analysis, I guess. Um, but it, it's just crazy. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so what would you say is the, um, when you get a new student, what is the number one problem? Anything besides being confused and disoriented by all this, the news out there? But is there one thing uh, that you see a lot of slicing, uh, hooking, um, uh, you know, uh, alignment off? What, what would you say is the number one problem that you see in most amateur golfers? I would say... And again, it goes back to misconceptions and confusion. That's and, and those misconceptions and the student being confused can cause, you know, I, I call it hitting it fat is digging to China. Mm-hmm. You know, your arms are too tight and you're hitting it thin, fat, fat, thin. Nobody hits it clean, airborne and straight. And that's all we're all trying to do is to hit it clean, airborne and straight. And then some of us want to hit it far. You know, but some of us don't really, you know, I've been trying to buy yardage my whole life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can't, I'm not, I'm never going to be Laura Davis, you know, get over it. And so um, I think that, I think the misconceptions and confusion really give the student doubt, apprehension, and fear. And when we can get over that, they can hit it clean, airborne, and straight very easily. And does does television hurt or harm uh, harm us in a way watching uh, the tours because they're so uh, you know, especially the men's tour. I I always used to I enjoy watching the ladies play because it just amazes me how some of these little girls. Uh, uh, I hope I'm not being sexist, but you know what I mean. Um, right. Especially these ladies. You're like, from, wait a minute. How did she just hit a 250? I'm, I'm just yeah. amazed. And, She's and, five foot three, I, and she weighs 100 pounds, and I want to Soaking wet. Yeah. <laughs> totally agree with you. I And I go to tour events, and I go, oh, my God. <laughs> but see, again, you know, nobody hit it that far when I was younger. Because we were out drinking with the caddies, right? I mean, we weren't working out. We weren't, you know, we didn't take care of ourselves as much as they do now. So this is a big business. You know, these kids are making millions of dollars a year, and they are their only inventory. You know, they are the product. So Mm -hmm. they really pay attention and commit to becoming the best player they possibly can be. I mean, there were no fitness trailers traveling with us again you know i played in the senior lpga championship and the fitness trailer was there and i was like whoa i can go over here and have him rub my neck and (laughs) stretch me out before i got to go play in this 45 degree weather this is awesome i'm like a spoiled brat um so i think i don't think tv hurts i think tv helps i know tiger woods helps because you could witness that when he won that tournament Mm -hmm. but um i think people think they can do that right and you know there's a huge difference between you know 
Santa Claus and and dropping the gifts, you know, at different people's houses. And again, you know, it's funny because I, Alan and I are the only married couple in the world that have played on all four major tours, the LPGA tour, the PGA tour, the champions tour and the women's legends tour. And we have three beautiful children. Our oldest daughter is a producer at golf channel. Our middle son played college golf at Augusta state. And our baby was a baseball player who can hit the ball far, but he slices it like a mile. So our middle son is the only player and he just won the men's mid am championship. And, in, uh, for New York State, mm-hmm. and he came in second in the New York Open one year, shot 67 at Beth Page Black okay. from all the way back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this kid can play. And Alan is like five foot nine, and this kid is six foot two, <laughs> and he weighs 210. Now, and I and I wasn't messing around on Alan, right? <laughs> and and this kid flies at 300 yards, and I'm like. Who gave you those genes, yeah, right? Why, why didn't I get that? <laughs> right. So, again, it's just some people can do it and some people can't. And just be really good at what you can do and be grateful for it. And uh, do you think that we we um, try to emulate too much instead of playing within ourselves? Well, yeah. I mean, it's a reality check. Mm-hmm. Again... They're I, I playing in the senior LPGA championship. Now, Laura Davies um, is three quarters bigger than me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So she's six foot whatever. And she flies it. Just She just kills it. So there's a par five, number seven at French Lick Resort where we played the senior LPGA championship. And I have three shots, so driver, three wood, maybe heaven wood, and then a nine iron. She's hitting the green in two with an iron. And I'm playing in the same tournament against her. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you got to hope she's you know, off so it, that day, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she should shoot five under, right? Right. This is like pitch and putt for her. But again, there's so many differences. And I have to be grateful, plus the fact that I'm probably eight years older than her. So <laughs> stop whining and be glad you're in the tournament. <laughs> well, um, you do make a point of that uh, in some of your videos. I mean, one video uh, I uh, I remember, it said, uh, um, be a big girl and put on your big girl pants and make the golf shot. <laughs> Yeah, suck it up. Right? Um, one thing I want to know is what exactly is the barf position? Well, so here's the catch. When you, I teach a lot of women, right? Mm-hmm. And the committee of they always attack the women at the driving range because the guys are trying to pick up the girls. Right. So a guy <laughs> will walk up to a girl and say, well, you got to act like you're sitting on a bar stool, which is going to make you sit, right? Mm-hmm. And nobody sits. When they hit a shot, they're bowing over. So I say, I don't want you to poop. I want you to puke. (laughs) So I want you to bow over so that your arms hang relaxed from your shoulders. (laughs) And again, the way I describe it, I'm very um, blunt and bossy. And I've tried to clean myself up, but I just don't communicate right, you know. So when the way I describe how you should play or swing or when I do video golf tips, people remember what I say, and I simplify it, and I make it fun, and, and they get better. Uh, you certainly do simplify it and uh, do make it fun. I've watched a number of the YouTube videos and some of your uh, motivational speaking, and, and it was really quite uh, – entertaining as well as uh something i was able to pick up from it so uh you're right on track there so now when you get to the lpga legend store what is in your bag so what what clubs do i have yes well i'm on the callaway staff and I have an epic driver that is nine degrees, but it's set at eight. 
because I hit the ball pretty high. Mm-hmm. I have a, a plus three plus wood, which is 13 degree uh, fairway wood, three wood. I have a heaven wood, which is like the magical club of the world. Oh, my God, this heaven <laughs> wood goes. <clears throat> and it's an epic. And I've got some kind of special shaft in these three clubs. I have no idea what it's called. It's orange and white striped. <laughs> But I was fit for, and it goes farther. Anything that goes farther, it's, I'm in, You're right? In <laughs> right? And then I've got a, don't laugh at me, I've got a three, four, five, six, seven hybrid. Yes, I said seven hybrid. <laughs> and I have eight, nine pitch um, irons. So if I get a new set of irons, I'm a total cheap date. I've got four. <laughs> well, no, I've got three. I've got eight, nine pitch. And then I carry a... Um, 50-degree 50, 50 wedge and a 58-degree wedge. Sometimes I change it out with the 54 because it, I can only have two. Yeah. So I, because I don't hit it far, I need all these, you know, hybrids. Mm-hmm. And then I've got an Edel putter that I was fit by, David Edel. And, um, you know, sometimes I like him and sometimes I don't like him and sometimes we have tryouts <laughs> but right now the Edel putter is in the bag okay <laughs> and you've played with uh, so many great names in the game of golf over the years but what would be your dream foursome of all time living or dead okay so there's definitely Arnold Palmer Definitely Kathy Whitworth. Now, I would I get to play with Alan whenever I want, right? So <laughs> Alan would be there, but I would love to play golf with Jesus. So me, Arnold, Kathy Whitworth, and Jesus. And I would have to duct tape my mouth because I've got a truck driver mouth, so I'd have to not be swear. <laughs> well, he may already know that, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've ever had anybody say Jesus. <laughs> well, I think he'd probably play pretty good, right? <laughs> I mean, I think so, but you right? know, he might. It's easy for him to cheat too. You know? <laughs> I love Kathy Whitworth. I've played a lot of golf with Joanne Carner. Um, she came to our wedding in Buffalo. I love Joanne Carner. Arnold was just. Alan played his first official practice round of his first ever Masters with Arnold. Arnold, Alan used to play with Arnold a lot when we were first married, and he was still on the tour. Alan was, and it was Arnold was just he had that, uh, and he was just so cool. Yeah, yeah. I, he was a great guy. I never met him, but uh, just uh, seeing him on television and and uh, being interviewed and such, you could tell that he was. A, a, a true guy, a true man, and, and uh, a really good person uh, deep yeah. down. Um, let me throw some names at you. You can give me some reactions to it. Uh, Nancy Lopez, you mentioned her earlier. Kind, warm, loving, awesome. Uh, Beth Daniel. Olive oil, very <laughs> cool, best golf swing in the world. <laughs> No, no, did you ever? Uh, did did you play with Annika Sorenstam at all in in your? Nope, nope. And you know what's funny is Alan. Uh, she's married to Jerry McGee's son, Mike McGee, and um, so Alan used to play in the team championship with Jerry McGee, uh, the dad, right? Mm-hmm. Jerry McGee, and so Mike McGee and I are friends on. Facebook. I've met Mike. I don't think I've ever met Annika in person face to face. Hi, how are you? But Mike McGee comments on stuff that Alan and Jerry McGee talk about all the time. So no, I've never met her, but <laughs> unbelievably awesome. Yes, she so. was so I watched her hit balls at a tour event and her caddy was catching shots that she was hitting from one sixty with a baseball net. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh gee. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, kind of good, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, Betsy King. Very conscientious and very giving. Very analytical. Uh, Donna Capone. Awesome. 
caring, warm, loving, sweetheart. It it seems like the the, um, the tour years ago. I, I don't know. Was it was it closer than it is today? And and uh, is it just my imagination as a fan saying that or? Um, it it just seems it was a, a a certain closeness that may not be there today, but today is such the business end of it has taken over everything. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, you got to stop and think. And and I'm not having a pity party, but the girls, the women that played before me, you know the. Joanne Carter, Kathy Whitworth, mm-hmm. Donna Capone, Marlene Hagee, all those women were such pioneers. And right. that's what makes it so sad that we don't really have a tour. And not that we deserve a tour. I don't say, you know, give us something for nothing. But I think there's value in the wisdom. I have always sought advice from people that are smarter than me who have done what I want to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You always go to an expert. So I think these women, um, they weren't handed anything. And I think a lot of these kids today, their parents, their whole lives surround themselves around the kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The kid doesn't, I mean, they work. I'm not saying they don't practice, but, but they don't know how to be resourceful right? because they haven't had to be, you know? Right. So I I posted an article on Facebook about let your kids fail. You know, we got all these parents. There's this big to do going on up here in the Western New York PGA junior tour, you know, of all these kids cheating. Well, the parents help them cheat, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. because the parents want the kid to win. And I'm like, Jesus, let them, let them lose. The only way they're going to learn is by losing. So I think that, yes, our tour was closer because we had to be, because we were all moving toward the common goal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And this, and it's a business, and it's a great business, and I'm not saying these girls aren't good. And a lot of them are friends with each other, which you don't see right, unless you're right. friends with them on Facebook. You know, like Morgan Pressel just had her breast cancer uh, tournament, and everybody's posting and having a picture together and they're friends Mm -hmm. you know but uh and maybe it's me because i can tell you um like joanne carner still wants to play golf with me i edify these women because i know how great they were and are so when they see me they're nice to me because i i admire them Mm mm-hmm and I don't think all these kids even know who these women are, which is so sad. That that's, the, you know, mm-hmm. the history of the game. I mean, Pat Bradley, Jane Blaylock, you know, Jan Stevenson, and and I don't. I know you're better than me. You know, Rosie Jones. Right. We were talking about a tour. I go, hey, you guys can do the competing if you want. Let me do the corporate training. I know you're a better <laughs> player than me. I'm right. okay with that. You know. Right. And we all get certain gifts. So let's get better and not bitter. Exactly. And 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 I think part of it, too, is uh, you were saying about let your kid lose. But that's kind of a societal issue, too, with, with you know, these participation trophies and all of that. When I was a kid, you lost, you lost. <laughs> you know, my parents said, hey, you didn't win. Um, now, right. nowadays, I don't think we we teach the kids to lose because you, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And, um, right. But but that's... And, and that's the only way you learn. You know, you got to yeah. make mistakes. Yeah. And and if you if you when you make everybody makes mistakes and and if you're willing to look in the mirror and see what you did wrong, then you can fix it. So how did you get started in the podcast? Um, I, Ted Odorico emailed me and said, Hey, I'm looking for somebody to co-host a radio show. Do you want to talk on the phone and see if you want to do it? I said, okay. <laughs> so we've been doing it for like four years. 
Well, it's terrific, and uh, I enjoy it, and I hope you do it for another number of years. <laughs> now, be, with everything that you've done, teaching, uh, touring pro, motivational speaker, what aspect now, do you do you enjoy the most at this stage of your career? You know what? I I, I really enjoy inspiring people to take another shot, whether it's at a golf ball or at their business or even their life. And and I started a nonprofit called the Pursue Your It Foundation, and I gave a speech, two speeches yesterday, to fourth and fifth graders in an underserved school in western New York, and I'm trying to challenge them to pursue their it, which is their potential passion and purpose in life. Because we got a grant from the Empire State Fund to run an after-school program in January. And these kids had no idea what this was about, so Mm -hmm. I went and told them. So, again, fourth and fifth graders all the way up to, you know, 95 years old. It's never too late to get better. So don't be afraid to miss it and take another shot. And I forgot to mention that you also are a member of the Greater Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, Great honor. And uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time today to uh, come on and talk to us. And uh, good luck on the the Legends Tour. Well, thank you. I enjoyed being a guest. (laughs) And if I get to Buffalo... I hope you can help me with my game because it needs a lot of work. <laughs> well, you should come to Buffalo. You can go visit Niagara Falls and come for a lesson, and I promise you I'll help you, and it won't confuse you. Oh, okay. Uh, and and where can we, uh, if people want to get uh, uh, in touch with you or, um, or hire you or uh, – uh, uh, get an appointment for a lesson, where would they go? CindyMillerInc.com. CindyMillerInc.com. I-N-C. CindyMillerInc.com. You can email me, Cindy, at CindyMillerInc.com. You can book a lesson. You can snoop out what I speak about and corporate training and all kinds of stuff. Okay. Cindy, thank you again so much for your time. And, uh, again, good luck on the Legends Tour and and everything else that you do. Thanks, Gary. I enjoyed it. Have a great day. Okay. You too. Sponsor an ad on the podcast. Support our show and let people know about your business. Email us today. Now it's time to do the calendar. And there's not too much on the calendar for next week as we're still early in 2019 and into the season. But we have the Sony Open in Hawaii. That will be the event for next week on the PGA Tour. And Patton Kissery is the defending champion there. So Patton Kissery defends at the Sony Open in Hawaii. And that's it. And that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. I hope you enjoy it. And I want to thank my guest, Cindy Miller, for coming on and spending some time with me. And I want to thank you all for listening. And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or Google Play or iTunes, wherever you watch or listen to the podcast. And if you go to YouTube, uh, I hope you'll uh, leave a uh, a comment uh, below the video there. Love to get the comments. Doesn't matter. Wherever you listen to the podcast, you can leave a, on iTunes as well. You can leave a comment. Hope you'll leave a comment there as well. And uh, again, hit the subscribe button. That helps me grow the show and expand the new listeners. And if you'd like to be a part of the show, don't forget you can send an email to talkinggolf at gmail.com or call the hotline at 516 362 0443 and leave a comment or a message. And until next time, remember, as you walk down the fairway of life, you must smell the roses, for you only get to play one round. Good night, everybody.